Hi guys, this is Matthias, and in this video I'd like to share with you some of the ways that I have been able to build up quite successful defenses uh, around my settlements. And I'll start off by showing you from uh, the settlement Cas the castle, but I'll also show you a few other things that I've learned about uh, settlements, some of the things that I think is important, and some of the things that I have enjoyed while playing Fallout 4. Now the way I put up the defenses around this base is mainly based on attacks, such as what you see here. And I built it up gradually, so in the beginning here in the video you'll see how uh, the defenses are not even close to finished. But the way I did it, uh, the ideas and the decisions I took was based on the attacks coming from uh, mainly uh, super mutants, raiders, and uh, sometimes ghouls and even rad scorpions. So there, there's a number of different uh, opponents or enemies that will attack your settlements. Now, the castle is by far my favorite settlement and I made it into my main base, so to speak. And the basic part of the idea is to make sure that the enemies can't get in, because once they get in, they will do a lot of damage to the, especially your crops, but uh, a number of other structures in your base. And one of the things about the castle is, of course, that it's very easy to keep them out. But what you need to keep in mind if you want to try out this idea is that blocking them out from your base doesn't work on all opponents. Red scorpions, for example, will burrow underground and just pop up. And uh, they have several times just popped up inside of my crops and uh, made a lot of damage actually. Uh, especially before I was prepared for it and I didn't have any uh, defense turrets in that area. And so far I've mainly used uh, a variety of defense turrets, such as the one you see here, and guard posts. Now the turrets, they do cost a lot more resources but the guard posts, even though they are cheaper to build, requires a settler to man it, and of course that will slow down your production. I also did get to the limit of how much I can build quite quickly on this base, and uh, ever so soon, hopefully, I'll be able to show you what I've actually built on this base, but it's not really quite finished yet, and I have to uh, scrap a couple of uh, structures before I can get it the way I want it. Now, once you have enough defenses and food production, water, and some such, you will get rid of that exclamation mark uh, warning sign and your happiness will of course increase therefore your production in that settlement will also increase unfortunately at this point in time i don't really know what it all means however once i get some more information about it i'll make an updated video about that as well now i do have quite a number of settlements and i do have the perk local leader at the first rank of local leader, you can start making um, supply lines or connecting your settlements with supply lines so that you can share resources. Now on the second rank, you can build uh, shops and workbenches. Also quite handy actually, but maybe not as necessary, at least not in the beginning. Because you do have all the workbenches at Sanctuary if you choose to uh, expand on that settlement. Excuse me. Looking for a weapon? Yeah, like I can assign somebody to that um, weapon stand. Let's see what you got. Here's but she I've never, got. she never goes there, and I can buy from her. Right. But she will never go there. I'll have to find her someplace else. That's that's so irritating. So now in my opinion, and I believe this goes for most players actually, the most important shop is of course the weapon stand, because this is where you can get the most amount of ammo from. Some players of course value uh, the amount of money that these um, barters have, and uh, for me, the one that has the most is the medic one. So far she has never been bugged, and uh, neither has any of the other ones, it's only this one for the weapon stand that's been bugged for me. At the same time, the barter that I have assigned to the medic stand is the one that ha is the only one that has been above 700 caps at any point in time. Uh, this might of course vary from player to player, I, I'm not entirely sure how it all fits together. And now about the bug, so to speak, about the settler never going to the weapon stand, I have uh, tried to assign a variety of different settlers to that particular stand, but so far it has always been the same no matter what. Perhaps if I recycle it or scrap it and rebuild it, I'm just gonna have to try that out as well. I'm sure I've got something you need. I've got a few minutes to browse. Great. So yeah, this is what has happened so far. Once I re uh, once I assign another settler to that weapon stand, he just takes over whatever the former settler had in uh, the shop. So yeah, it's only a matter of finding him when I need to uh, do some bartering, and that's that's the annoying problem. 
So now let me just quickly show you how you create a supply line between two different settlements. Now once you have the perk and a few people at uh, one of the settlements, you need to first decide to what other settlements you want to create that supply line. And in this case, I, it's either Abernethy's farm, Oberland Station, or Sanctuary, or a few other settlements that are nearby. And in this case, I decided to go with Oberland Station. Now keep in mind, you won't see the amount of shared resources when you look in the inventory. You only see it once you start crafting stuff. And as you can see in this settlement, there is quite a lot that needs to be done. So I start off with water and I decided to set up a few more water pumps. As you can see, I have uh, over 5,000 steel and plenty of concrete and gear. And keep in mind, before I made this supply line, I'm sorry I didn't show that, but before I made this supply line, I didn't have enough resources to even build one of these pumps. Now at this point in time, my food production is uh, enough, but it's nice to be able to have a little bit extra if I would need this to craft something at a later point in time. Now crafting is, like in all Bethesda games, a very easy way to level up if this is something that is important to you. And I'm actually going to make a video about crafting again, because there are a few uh, really nice advices that I'd like to share with you guys. Some of the things that I've discovered while playing. Now keep in mind, for food production, you have to assign a settler to these crops. Uh, it works like this, you walk up to them, and on PC you press E uh, on one of the settlers, and then you press E again when you've decided what resource you want to assign them to. Now you don't need this for water, but for god posts and uh, crops, you need uh, to assign settlers. So yeah, in this element, uh, some of the uh, settlers have to share their bedroom with a dead ghoul, but it doesn't seem to bother them too much, to be honest. Here you can see in a better example how the supply line works. I want to build this generator, but I don't have enough gear to do so. Luckily, this particular settlement comes with one settler, and I will assign him to create a supply line, and that way I can quickly get this settlement up and running, at least on a basic level. Now I have to say, building settlements is something that I've actually enjoyed quite a bit. It takes a while, and especially it takes a while to learn it all, and how to how you can fit it all together. Uh, there are quite a number of prefabs, such, such as this, they're kind of boring. The fun stuff is of course uh, building up something on your own. And uh, yeah, I just started off to trying out some different things, and uh, eventually if I ever get finished with one of these bases, which uh, probably will happen any year now, uh, I will of course show you that in an upcoming video as well. Here at the castle, of course I have to decide what to remove first, which probably is going to be the prefab that you saw under this base just about a minute ago. Now if this is something that really interests you, if you think this is a lot of fun and this is something you want to get into, one of the perks that you might want to put uh, two points into is the scrapper perk. It will allow you to get a lot more resources scrapping weapons or armor at the relative workbenches. Now that perk has actually been quite valuable for me. I'm interested in both weapon mods, armor mods and building settlements. So as I'm sure you can imagine, this requires quite a lot of material. And the thing is that when you're out doing missions and killing stuff, there is no way you can carry all possible loot. So a lot of it will just go to waste. Now in many situations there are actually workbenches nearby where you've had a fight. And if there is, then you can scrap weapons and armor right then and there. After you've killed all your enemies, and the junk once it's scrapped weighs a lot less. So yeah, for the base security, Plugging the holes, making sure that no enemies can actually get into the crops and uh, the valuable stuff that you have inside of the settlement is actually, in my opinion, the best way to go. Anyway, that's going to be all for this video, and I want to thank you all for watching. Okay.